Greetings, people of Earth. Welcome back. My name is Jax, and today, detachment. This video is either going to really resonate with you, change your perspective, or be totally dumb, doesn't make any sense, just turn it off, whatever. Um, this kind of topic, detachment, is very unpopular in the West. It has been sort of made to seem like a very negative thing. It's made to seem heartless and cold and uncaring and unloving. Um, and it's been stereotyped quite a bit, but, <laughs> the but, it's an incredibly useful, helpful tool, very good in mindfulness, very good in meditation, very good in your general life. Um, and in the West, we don't like this idea. We feel like we need to be attached to our possessions, to our things. We need to be emotionally dependent on other people. We need to be dependent on substances, on drinks, on food, on comfort. Um, if, if we're getting really real, the West and us in Western society love comfort. We love feeling comfortable. We love feeling cozy. And... <sighs> It's not necessarily very healthy. It's not inherently healthy. It's one way to live your life, but it's not the only way and it's not the best way. It's just a way to live your life. Detachment, um, and I'm basically going to be talking about the idea of Zen Buddhism, General Buddhism, um, Taoism, a little bit of Confucianism, but Confucianism isn't hugely dependent on detachment. Um, yeah, Eastern philosophy in, in many regards. There will be some like Stoicism in it as well because the Stoics from ancient Greece and Rome, like Zeno, were pretty big on this idea of detachment and it can be a very difficult topic to kind of wrap your head around. Essentially what detachment is, is the ability to let things go, to not depend on them. So detachment and dependency sort of go hand in hand, but they're often also viewed as opposites. Having a dependency on anything, whether it is a person, a thing, something you eat or ingest. Uh, I know a lot of young people nowadays have a detachment or have an attachment to vaping. Um, they get anxious and worried and um, sort of freak out. They can't sleep right unless they vape. And I think when you when you phrase it like that in terms of a dependency it becomes a little more um clear to a western head why detachment is actually a good thing so from a very young age i noticed that people were super dependent on their morning cup of coffee um, my parents included and well for my parents it was tea but in general caffeine is probably the most uh, dependent drug that people on this planet consume, I would think. I don't, maybe sugar, sugar might be like a close second, if not more, but I watched this from a very young age and I saw what would happen when the adults around me didn't have ca caffeine in the morning and how they became irritable and sort of unhappy, they'd have headaches, you know, all of these sort of side effects of, you know, withdrawal from having this dependency. And from a young age, I remember thinking like, ooh, I don't like that. I don't like the idea of being dependent on something. I really like, I've been an independent person for most of my life. And so the idea of being dependent on anything, whether it's a human being or something, is really kind of scary to me and it really just doesn't sit well with me in many ways. And as a result, I have sort of made one of my little missions in life to not be dependent on anything. And it's really helped with this whole idea of detachment because whether whether you just have something that you really like, and, and I'm not here to like criticize your choices. I'm not here to like say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. I just want you to be aware of it. And if you're aware of it and you still like the thing you like and it's, you know, it's not causing that much harm or it's not causing any harm, do it. Who am I to tell you anything? So I just want to preface that by saying that. 
but I grew up looking at these sort of things and you know I'm fortunate that I didn't have anyone in my immediate family but I definitely had you know friends and people in my vicinity who had dependencies on alcohol or cigarettes and things like that um, and those things really scared me um, I didn't drink my first thing of alcohol until I was probably 20 21 just really wasn't for me but that whole idea of being physically dependent on something is not good and so to detach yourself from whatever it might be that you feel you need in your life um, is quite empowering and it it gives you this perspective of like oh yeah it was nice while I was doing it but I, I realized like I don't need it I realized that it's not something that has to be a crutch or you know it might be comfortable it might be enjoyable but it's not something that I want to shape my life around. I started taking pre-workout at probably 22, 23 years old. And if you don't know, pre-workout is a substance that you usually put inside your water bottle shaker uh, before you work out. It's full of caffeine, high, high dose of caffeine. And essentially what it does is it amps you up, gets your blood pumping, uh, it helps you focus, it helps with determination, um, and it helps you work out harder. And there have been some studies that say it helps with muscle growth. There's been other studies that say it stunts your muscle growth and it's actually not good. But anyway, that's the context. I started taking it 21, 22, 23 years old. And I realized that I felt so good on the days that I took it. And that kind of scared me a little bit. And so uh, from then on, I take it maybe once a week, maybe every other day sometimes. But I'm really careful not to take it every day because I don't want to attach myself to that feeling or attach myself to needing it. And on the days that I don't take it, I feel just as good. I work out hard. Um, and on the days I take it, it's just an added boost. It gives me a bit of energy. Um, it does improve my mood a little bit, but I don't want to develop some kind of absolute hunger for it. Um, and that has to do with you know, feeling detached from it. I don't want it. Um, there's, there's a million things that I could say about being attached and detaching yourself from material possessions, the things around you, um, special things that you have that remind you of a loved one, when in reality, you know, the memory of that loved one is far stronger than whatever that, you know, trinket is. And it might be special. I have a few things that you know, from my grandparents and from people who are no longer with me that, you know, I consider kind of special. But when I look at them, I would much rather have the person. I would much rather be with the person who gave me it or the, the, the person I associate with that thing than actually have the thing. And I think that's a good way of sort of detaching yourself from material possessions and things like that. Because if you covet possessions or speci special trinkets or jewelry or whatever, um, you then become worried about losing them or worried about people taking them or, you know, and it's an added frustration. You have to worry about keeping the thing in good condition. You know, oh, I don't want it to rust. I don't want it to break. I don't want it to whatever. Um, and so in reality, that little thing, it might be nice to look at now and then, but you're kind of worried about it. And, you know, you be devastated if you lost it in a fire or in a burglary or whatever. Um, and so it creates sort of a dependency on protecting it and making sure it's okay. And when it comes to just something that is special because someone you love gave it to you, it's really the love and the, the person that is the important part in there. And, you know, that's, that's sort of the, the crux of it exactly. So, like I said, there's a million ways that I could talk about it. You know, your fast car, your nice house, whatever. The real point of contention that people in the West have with detachment is when it comes to detachment from other people. We in the West have this very traditionalized form of love and connection with our family, our soulmate, our lover, our wife, our husband, our partner. And... It is really hard to wrap your head around the idea of detaching yourself, <clears throat> sorry, detaching yourself from your loved ones. Um, if any of you have ever watched Avatar The Last Airbender, 
there is a scene in season two of the animated series where the character is dealing with detachment and the main character is really in love with this girl really in love just i love her so much and a monk is sort of training him and at one point says well you need to detach yourself from all worldly things in order to sort of have higher attainment you know and the character ends up choosing love and saying nope i'm not detaching myself i'm i love this girl no and that was always like a really interesting scene for me because it was my first it was really my first um, exposure to the idea of detachment and why detachment can be a very liberating, freeing experience that gives you a, a different quality of life. I'm not going to say a better quality of life. I'm going to say a different quality of life. So character doesn't and the, the plot moves on and it's never really addressed again. But the, the idea of detaching yourself from the way other people make you feel doesn't mean that you love them less it means that you're not dependent on them for your quality of life for your happiness i think we've all been involved with somebody that we get really attached to you know when we're first born usually our parents are we're absolutely attached to them because we need them for survival but somewhere along the line you come to a point where you don't need anyone else to survive you know you can exist fully functioning and independent. And that doesn't last forever. Obviously, as we get older and we age, you know, circumstances change and you do need other people. But in that stage where you're trying to discover who you are and you're gaining independence, the idea of attaching yourself to somebody you need, creating a dependency is really dangerous because that person can change because we all change. That person can die, and then we're really hooped. That person can decide that they don't want to be around you anymore. And so attaching your happiness and your mood and who you are to another person, um, it's essentially like taking your heart out of your soul, out of your rib cage, and giving it to another person and saying, be careful with that. Um, and that's not good. That's not healthy. Um, they say that about children, that it's like, it's like taking your heart and putting it into another soul and you're always worried about that child and you're taking care of them. Um, and that's obviously like an evolutionary thing, but you do get to choose how, how attached you are to other people. I used to always be so attached to my partner. Um, when I was in a relationship, I would be so attached to them. I would dote on them. I would make sure they were absolutely fine. And if they weren't having a good day, I wasn't having a good day. And that is not your way to live. Your way to live is to be an independent, detached human being who enjoys the company of other people. And this is where the West really misses the mark on detachment because they think, oh, well, if you're just detached, it means you don't care about anybody else. And you're, you know, you're just this neutral faced robot. That is not what it means at all. To be detached is to be fully happy and developed in who you are. And when you're around other people, love, laugh, enjoy, spend time. But you don't need other people to feel those emotions. You don't need them to be feeling the same thing you are feeling in order to feel good about yourself. It is possible to truly enjoy somebody's company and time, whether it's one day or 60 years, it's so fine to enjoy that love and to cherish it and to appreciate, but you just don't attach your self-worth and how you feel to the other person and you don't define yourself by other people. That is true detachment and there's nothing wrong with that. And it doesn't mean that you don't love the person. It doesn't mean that you don't care for the person. It just means that you are a person who can stand on their own, enjoying the time and the, the comfort of other people while not having a physical or chemical dependency on them. It's, it's like I can enjoy a cup of tea, but I don't need it in the morning to feel good about myself. I can enjoy the love of people in my life, but I also love life. I also love so many things and I'm happy to exist in this world and I'm not dependent on any individual one of them for my satisfaction or my time 
you know, I've, I've said this for a long time, but if I went tomorrow, if I was gone and we're gone off to the great plane or whatever, I would be able to look back on my life and say, that was a good one. I really enjoyed that. I had so much fun, you know, every person, every moment, you know, it was an experience. It was, it was amazing. Even the sad points, even the difficult points, even the painful points. I'm glad I got to experience all of it. And I think that that, that, that feeling is being detached from even your own life and it might not be a very popular opinion, but it's the one I hold strongest of all. And so I'm just happy that I got to experience it all with amazing people and interesting things. And not one of them was, I wasn't dependent on any of them for, for who I am, for my self-worth, for my happiness, for my peace of mind. I was able to cultivate it all myself and enjoy it myself. And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So yeah, controversial topic, but it's one of my favorite topics to talk about. I love talking about this with strangers and just saying like, what do you think of detachment? And the conversations are always so interesting because people have so different perspectives. My perspective is not right. It's just my perspective. I, I want to make that very clear. Like I said about you know, if you like something, don't feel like you have to change just because some kid on the internet told you you did. Please understand that this is my point of view. This is how I view detachment. Um, this is my peace of mind. When I'm going to bed at night, I think about it and I'm like, you know what? I'm happy about myself and I'm happy about the universe. And tomorrow will be a crazy day where I will experience a vast range of emotions and I won't feel attached to any of them because I know who I am and I'm not afraid to be who I am. So it's my perspective. I'd love to know yours. Let me know. Uh, what do you think of detachment? Do you have a negative view of it? Is it not for you? Is it something that you'd like to cultivate? Is it something that you did in the past that just didn't work out? All of which is totally fine, but let me know what you think. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll talk to you tomorrow.